Hey everyone, so this is a quick video just to show you how to make edits to your website. Um, it's very easy once because well, your website is not set up. Um, so Wix make it really easy to kind of edit the content and some color options as well. Um, what you want to do is set up in your dashboard and then all you need to do is click on edit site to actually open the site in edit mode and get started with upgrading and updating all of your site with new content. When you open your website in edit mode, it's going to look something like this. You're going to have your website in the middle here. And then you're going to have um, the section on the right to actually edit your content and, and make edits to the actual website. Um, so for example, um, if I wanted to edit a section here, for example, I just click into the section. And on the right hand side, it'll show me what edits I can actually make in terms of like the color, content um, and the images as well. Um, so you can see that here. So I've got a section background color and I've got the paragraph. You'll notice as I click on or as I hover over certain sections, the section it relates to will hover on the actual editor as well. So for example, when I hover over this paragraph on the right, you'll see the actual paragraph that's on the website also gets highlighted so I know exactly what I'm editing. So if I click into that paragraph, I can then uh, change the content of it and I can also change things like the um, formatting and then you can see it also changes instantly on the website as well. So it's really easy to change the content. Um, I just need to click on the section and then see where it's going to be changed on the actual website and then I can change it. Same goes for any imagery being used. So for example, this image here, if I highlight over it, you can see the image is being highlighted. Um, and I can then go in and change the image to an image that I upload. If I can just click on upload media and upload one of my own images. Um, I can upload from computer or I can use one of the media from Wix and I can use one of the placeholder images that Wix um, allow us to use and that are free to use as well. But it means then I can just quickly and easily change the content um, of the website. Um, if I wanted to go onto another page and change the content on the other page, you'll see on the drop down up here, there's a um, page drop down. Um, in this example, there's only one page, but you'll see a list of all your other pages and you can just click on that page. And it's the same way to edit. You just click onto the section and then on the right hand side, you'll be able to see what you can actually edit. So it makes it really easy to make edits to your website as well. Um, and then the site itself is mobile responsive, so you don't need to worry about then making the site more responsive as well. The sections are already responsive. So the only thing that you'll be able to change really is the content and some of the colors as well that you use. Um, and once you're done, you just want to click on publish. Um, it might say save or update as well, but the save button essentially is here um, so that you can save all your changes and then you can um, continue making changes to your site, adding content and things like that. So now let's take a look at some of the forms. So let's talk about um, editing your form. So in order to edit the forms on your website, what you want to do is come to your dashboard and then you just want to click on edit site to open your site in edit mode. So as you can see, we've got the, for, the website open edit mode and we have a form on this homepage um, at the bottom. So we're just gonna scroll down to the bottom here. And just click into the form. So you can see when I click into the section and I click on the right hand side, the form settings is just all the way at the bottom. I'm looking for this button here called edit form. So if I click on edit form, it's going to open the form builder. 
And Wix form builder is really easy to use. It's really easy to add some fields um, onto the form and then remove fields, uh, add conditional checking for each of your fields and things like that. So we've got this form here. It's in edit mode. Right now the form just says get, get in touch. Um, it has some instructions and it has like the basic forms. So in order to, for example, edit the text here, what we can do is click into the actual text box and click edit and we can change the text content. We can change the formatting. We can change um, the different headings being used as well to so change the formatting a little bit. Um, say we wanted to add um, another field. So we've got one for email. Say we wanted to add one for phone. We're just going to click and drag that over to where we want to add the, for the field. So we've got obviously first name, last name. And I want to place it just above email. So I'm going to drag that over above email. You can see whenever I've got the form, the field selected on the right hand side, it shows me all the options. So it gives me an option for the field title. So if you thought it was fun, we can change that, but I'm just going to leave it the way it is. You can decide if you want it to be a required field or not, meaning do people actually have to fill this in in order to submit the form? If it's toggled to yes, that means they this will need to be filled in. If it's not toggled, it means they can leave this blank. So if you want an optional field, um, it depends on if it's if you've marked it as a required field or not. You can have the option to have placeholder text, and this is useful if you wanted to add um, a message. Um, so for example, enter your phone number. It's a really good way to kind of add instructions to each of your fields. Um, good, it's good practice to add a placeholder for all of your fields. Um, it reduces the chances of someone not being able to fill out your form if it's not clear enough. Um, and then you can give it a field description as well. Um, I feel like if you have placeholder text, you won't need to do the description. If you have description, you won't really need the placeholder text. Both of these are really just to show that you just give a bit more instructions to the user as to what they're actually meant to fill in here. Um, so same goes um, if you click on, for example, last name, you get the same options. You get the option for field title um, and things like that. If you go into the advanced tab, they'll be different for every single field that you have. So for example, in the last name field and the first name field, um, the advanced tab, you only get the option to limit characters. So you can decide if you want to set a minimum um, or maximum character limits. For the email field, um, you there aren't really any more advanced uh, options. Um, the text box is, has an advanced option as well. Um, in terms of contact fields, um, obviously you've got these ones here to add, for example, email, phone, company name, things like that. You can also have general fields if you want to have another a field for a short answer, um, you can add that as well. Um, you've got long answer field, so this is kind of similar to the uh, message text as well. You've got a number field if you want people to enter a number, and then with that you can also have an advanced option of setting a number range, things like that. Um, you also have the option of these kind of drop down checkbox, multiple choice, single choice, things like that. So if you wanted to give users to pick between an option of fields, um, you can do that as well. Um, so single choice, obviously, you just have the option. You give them a list of options, they only have to pick one. Multiple choice will give them a field of options, but they have to they can pick multiple ones. Um, you can do checkbox, drop down, all of that. Um, with Depending on what plan you have, you there is a limit on how many fields that you can have. So for example, right now you can see um, we've got the option of 10 fields. If you wanted to add more fields, if you want this to be a bit more of advanced form, you will need to upgrade your plan. Um, and there are some fields that are um, will need to be upgraded to use. In this case, it's just the file upload. So this is uh, basically if you want users to upload a file. So for example, if this is a field, if this is a form for um, a job job advertisement or uh, a job application, and you want people to to upload their CV, then you can use the file upload field, but again, you'll need to upgrade um, in order to use that more of advanced field. Once you've uh, done your fields and you've edited your form, you can click preview. And then if you're happy with all that, you can just click save. Once it's saved, you can exit out of it and this should update. Um, you may need to refresh the page, however. Yeah, so you see we've got the form updated and it's got all of the fields that we want. So now let's take a look at some of the form uh, field submissions. So if you go into communications, there's a tab here that says form and submissions. Um, and this is where basically when someone fills in a form, you'll get an email notification, but it's also saved um, to your backend of the UX as well. So you see we've got this form here. 
And this is a form that we just edited. And if someone has, we do have a submission here. You just want to click on edit. Um, and you can edit your form that way. And then you can also look at the actual submission. If you go back. And click on view submissions. You can see we've got a view submission here and it shows you all of the forms, all of the information that they filled in. So they filled in like the first name, last name, and what their answers are. You can then export all of these into a CSV file if you wanted, um, but all of the information is here as well. And you can edit from this section as well. So it's really easy to edit your forms, add forms. Um, but again, for more advanced forms and more advanced features, you will need to upgrade your plan um, if you wanted to use those. But you do have the option if you, do, if you did want to do that. And that's it. I hope it helps. Um, any questions, let us know.